Rick and Daryl find Jesus. Not a religious thing. I mean, they actually find a guy named Jesus. And the Twitterverse explodes. Excellent adventure or bogus journey? Maybe a little bit of both. On this week's episode of The Walking Dead, Season 6, Episode 10, The Next World. So, spoilers ahead, just so you've been warned. All right, so we are getting that time jump that we had expected to, and we find out very early on, specifically the camera pan down to show the picture of Carl with the bandaged eye holding uh, baby Judith, certainly looking very happy. Um, sort of lets us know that at least a significant amount of time has passed. We find out later on it's about two months since the end of the last episode. And the mood and the change to the, the people in Alexandria is very apparent. Everybody is much more comfortable with each other. There is a camaraderie in the air that's just that wasn't matched before. Um, just great little sequences with uh, Denise and Daryl as she's very cutely trying to shyly ask for him to get some pop. She's from Ohio. That's where they call pop. If you're in different parts of the country, some of the country calls it soda, some of it calls it pop. It's a regional thing. But a nice great little sequence between them. She's very cute being nervous asking Daryl. And of course Daryl's like, look, what do you want? Just tell me what you want and I'll go out and get it. I don't need all of these big reasons for it. Uh, which was just very cute. And then as they're leaving, the, the scene with Eugene was just hilarious how he's trying to ask them to find sorghum. Um, also, if you didn't know, sorghum is a uh, one of those super grains, so it can be used kind of like wheat for people that are, are, are have problems with gluten. Um, anyway, just a great food source, has a lot of, of vitamins, minerals, uh, things like that, that would be important for a post-apocalyptic community. But just sort of a great scene, and, and, and honestly, if the whole thing is just the look on Rick's face uh, while they're saying goodbyes, he's just, he's just staring like, what are you talking about? What? It was just, just that little moment just as Eugene leaves and they drive off, that look maintaining on Rick's face as he leaves is just is brilliant. I, I just that had me rolling for the longest time. Um, but basically we have Daryl and Rick going out on a run. They've done this a few times. They haven't found a whole lot of stuff. They're trying to get some more food, supplies, your basic kind of thing. Um, this is a short-term run. They imply that there's going to be a longer run that Tara and Heath are going off to. They expect to be gone for a couple of weeks. Um, so I guess that's when they're, they're really heading out in further distances. But this is just more of a local run, trying to get some food and supplies. And, and again, continuing on with just fun little moments, when they do find the supply truck, it's, of course, any build -em marked sorghum. And with all of the looks and all of the flack they seem to be giving Eugene when he's asking for it, he's quite true. They find sorghum and they find supplies. A whole cube truck filled with stuff. And this is, this is just the bounty. Uh, which leads up to one of my real first kind of questions uh, within this episode is, why the hell do they leave that car behind? Why do they both get in the truck and take that? One, how much fuel does the truck have? Do you know if it's going to keep running? Do you know if it has any problems? If it happens to break down, they're going to be off in the middle of nowhere with just the one broken vehicle. There's two of them. They have one to drive the truck and one to drive the car. Now, possibly you want a gunner. You want one person who is driving and one person who can respond with guns and firefights in case they get chased or something like that. I mean, that's really a tactical situation. If they were that concerned, I don't know if Rick would be blaring out the horrible music that he was. Another great scene where <laughs> you just have Daryl just saying, stop, no, please, no, don't, no, no, don't do that. Just, it's, it's, it's torturous. I think all of Rick's Rick has the worst chase, taste in music. I'm sorry if you disagree and you love the stuff. There was a fun component to it, I will admit. Um, but the, I am picturing that, that Daryl has heard this way too many times, that there's probably just one CD that Rick is listening to over and over and over again, and it's just awful. At least we definitely know that's not uh, Daryl's taste in music. And while they're out on this run, they, again, 
find Jesus, or really more Jesus finds them, slams right into them as, as they're trying to pull over or, or, or knock over the, the, the vending machine. And this brings us back to kind of the earlier conversations and a lot of the main thrust of, of Daryl and, and Rick's adventure uh, throughout this episode is about getting people. Um, now, before Rick did not was not interested in expanding the ranks anymore. He could barely deal with the Alexandrians. He was very focused upon the group. After the what happened with Carl and and the big gathering of Alexandrians together in order to fight off the invading uh, Walker horde that was in their town, he's really changed his perspective on things. He's really opened up to including people in. Daryl, on the other hand, while he was very open to going out and finding new people and strengthening community, he's had some bad experiences. He ran into um, Dwight and the girl and them and then running into Negan's little biker game. Daryl's not so much into getting new people in. He's feeling a bit more protective. So the two of them have sort of switched positions. And this is what's going on throughout this episode, especially when they run into Jesus. Rick is very quick on readying up the three questions. How many people have you killed? And, and, and Daryl's like, no, 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 we don't, we don't need this guy. You know, let's, let, let's not trust it. This is what's happening in the back and forth. Now, in this instance, they're kind of both right because Jesus, while he gives the impression of being a good guy, certainly gives them any cause throughout the episode to question that. It's a beautiful distraction with the fireworks. Uh, he grabbed the keys when he ran into Rick and then they, he stole the truck and thus began the big chase down the street. Again, should have brought the other car. I would have made this so much easier. And that begins their sequence of discussions, running down the street, getting him. Uh, Jesus, badass. And that guy can fight, and that's, that's kind of a, a fun change because we haven't really seen these types of skills evident on the show before. It's a lot more brawling, whereas Jesus is much more of a martial artist. He's quick, he is spry, he is, he is unexpected. So it's a nice character to sort of throw in. What really just got me on this episode, mainly with these two, was the freaking chase in the field. All right. So you get the truck back, you're driving off. First of all, you get in the truck and then you sit there and you have a soda and you have a little conversation back and forth, giving Jesus plenty of time to escape his rope and do something. I thought he had jumped in the back or grabbed on. Ends up being he was on top of the roof. So they knock him down and then they chase him through this field. Why are you doing it? It's completely unnecessary. It's like, oh, you guys are kids and he just pissed you off. He just upset you, he tagged you and now you're it. Also, if you are going to chase a man in the truck and you're going to get out, you stay in the truck until you get up to the guy and then you do the leap out and, and, and grab him. You don't jump out of the truck and then run down the field after him. It didn't make any sense. Why Rick got out? Why did he have to go stab the walkers? All right, there's walkers. Daryl is dealing with Jesus. Whatever. But where the hell did the lake come from? Didn't even see the lake until after the stupid knock of the thing and then it rolled back into the water. At that point, all I can say is they deserve to lose that. They deserve to lose that truck of food. They were stupid and they paid the price. <sighs> I'm glad Jesus was safe and I'm glad this very cool moment uh, with him and Daryl when he pulls the gun on Daryl and then says duck and shoots the walker behind him. If anything, that established his character. He was never mean. He never really attacked the guys. He took their stuff, but he wasn't violent about it. He wasn't mean about it. He never shot. He never pulled a weapon, as, as, as Rick mentions later on. He never does any of that stuff. What he does do the minute he pulls a weapon is he saves Daryl's life. And I think that's why they ended up bringing him back. But still, just a great sequence. The, the interplay between um, Rick and Daryl, between Andrew Lincoln and Norman Reedus, is just hilarious. The two of them working together is, one, you think that just on a personal standpoint, these two actors playing these roles are having a great time doing it. Because they really establish the, the kind of tete-a-tete, tete, the back and forth, the almost brotherly relationship that these two have is they're equally motivating each other, messing with each other, and supporting each other throughout the episode, throughout any of their kind of adventures through. And I think why hopefully the two of these are going to stay together 
for a long time. Do not kill. <laughs> Do not kill Daryl. And really kind of, it just, just, it's just a fun energy in throughout this. Yes, it was kind of a misadventure, but you could really see the two of them having a great time doing it. Meanwhile, back in Alexandria, apparently everybody is just roaming through the woods. We've got Enid and Carl doing their little childish running through. Why? Because we're kids and this is what kids are supposed to do. We are not kids. Great interplay between, between Enid and Carl. And then, of course, the big one, Michonne and Spencer. And few questions, but I think it was pretty evident early on, even before they did the big reveal of why Spencer was there. Why are you wandering through the woods with a shovel and you're trying to hunt something down? And that is, of course, again, spoilers, um, is Deanna. Zombie Deanna. Because remember, she was given the gun to kill herself uh, when, the when the walkers came in uh, to Alexandria, and she didn't. And that just wonderful sequence of, of the, of the, the mid-season finale is just emptying the gun into the walkers that were coming and just screaming in this violent kind of in-your-face, I am not going to succumb um, type of scene. It was just, it was a beautiful thing to see. But of course, the, the, the consequences of this is now you're a walker. And Spencer just is not, it, it can't allow her to go on. So that's why he's wandering through the woods and that's what they, the interplay between him and Miss Sean is. What's really cool is when Carl and Enid run into Deanna. Enid sees it as oh, we have to stop or we have to do it, but, but Carl sees it differently and I think it really does harken back to uh, him having to kill his mom uh, when, when Judith was born. Is that was the same type of thing. Is, is He's looking at it and he's just like, look, I saw that Spencer was out here. Why were they wandering around? This must be. He puts it all together very quickly. Uh, and, and his discussion in towards the end that he has with Michonne, I think, think was just great, is it should be someone who cares about her. It should be someone who loves her. And this is something that I would do for you. It's a different reality in this world. It's, it's when someone's turns, I mean, one, you should Keep them from turning if at all possible. But if they do, really ending them is, 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 is a personal thing. It is, it is a release. And I think as horrifying as it was for Carl to originally go through it, I think he saw the value and the importance with this. And I think, I think it is establishing something new in this world of, of showing love and respect, of being the one to take uh, uh, the, the Walker version of a loved one out, of, of a release mercy if you watch Z Nation, but I think it's the same appropriate type of thing. Um, and also very sweet that Carl lure, lures Deanna towards uh, Michonne and Spencer, but not to them and doesn't turn around and say, hey, do you need any help? Do you need to take it care of? Just sends her in the direction, knows that she's going to take, and then lets it be. It's not a big thing that he, he is claiming importance for or that you should listen or, or anything like that. I think that was just a great way of presenting uh, that moment and, and really in a way kind of bonding with Spencer is, is showing the need and the respect for that moment without having to be straight and vocal about it. Then of course as the episode uh, draws to a close we get to the giant Twitterverse exploding moment which is the connection of or the, the getting together of Rick and Michonne. Rishon, as I guess has been shipped through the internet. Um, big moment that really has been building for, I think, the past couple of seasons. It, it, and I like how it became more of a natural evolution of things. When the, when the episode opened, I was wondering if that's where they were, but of course, Michonne's been living with, uh, with Rick and Carl for some time. But I think really it, it, it just, it came out of a natural moment of these are two people that have had a really hard day and are just finally starting to find those moments where they can relax and not think of what is the next thing I have to do? What's the next responsibility that is weighing on my head? Can we just have a moment to just sort of be who we are? And as, as Michonne reflects constantly from what Deanna's words are, what is it that you want? And in that moment, they found that they needed that connection, that these, this, this, warrior that you have been with and it can go either way because each of them are warriors in their own right is the person that will always have your back and that you have the greatest connection in. So I, I think it worked very naturally and was a very beautiful sequence. That ended with another great surprise from Jesus. Hi, good morning!
Guys look great, by the way. Nice bodies. You work out? Um, and, and I'm wondering if this is going to be Jesus' thing, as he's just going to keep popping up out of unexpected places. It's a nice establishment of character, and I think does a couple of, of, of good things for him character-wise. One, he's sneaky. He's spry. He does the unexpected. He's, he's the thief. He's like the cat burglar of the group. But he is also not a bad person because he doesn't have a weapon. He doesn't own anything. And again, you have Rick and Michonne that are probably two of the, the, the harshest warriors, totally paranoid about what's going on. And if he can sneak up to them while they're asleep in their bed and just be standing there and just go, hey, good morning. Um, this is someone that you have to have a certain level of respect for. And I think also like I said, establishes that he is not a bad guy. He is not threatening them. He doesn't have a weapon. He is not doing anything of that point out of getting their attention in the most dramatic way possible. And I can't wait to see where he's going to bring us next. We're going to find out next week. We're going to talk about it right here. Please press like if you enjoyed the conversation today. Subscribe if you want to keep coming back. Come back week after week. We do this every week for this show, for Black Sales, for Agent Carter, for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is my new thing. I hope you are enjoying them. Please come on back. Got anything to say? Likes? Dislikes? Let me know. Write it down in the comment section below. I read everything. I try to respond to every comment that is put out there. I'm D. I've had a great week. I will be back next week with this show, with you guys. I hope that you will be here too. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.